Hi, I'm David Lawrence, founder and CEO of the Mission Gate Foundation. And in this video, we're going to be talking about in-shoe orthotics and the options that you can have from the supermarket all the way to the ped orthodist. I want you to know, to start with, we have no financial connection with any kind of in-shoe orthotic manufacturing company, so there's no conflict of interest. And the information is not brand specific. We're not going to talk about brands. We're just talking about the types of products that you might utilize. And the information that we're providing is experience-based information. With that being said, the orthotic industry is literally a billion dollar industry. Uh, everywhere from the supermarket, to the shoe store, to the medical or therapy uh, center, to the pseudo to full custom through a ped orthodist or an orthodist. Now let's start with the first category in the supermarket. That's really mainly a shock absorbing device. Can be very beneficial. But it's gonna basically absorb impact to make your feet more comfortable. What we're gonna focus on is the next level or category where we're talking about discussing corrective or supportive options. Those options that are gonna say, my foot actually needs support for a fallen arch, common term or, or problem. Uh, as well as I need corrective for an alignment issue in my foot. So those are our primary concerns that we're talking about now. So the products we're going to look at are really based on either yielding or soft materials or unyielding hard materials. And I want to kind of talk for a few minutes about the benefits or drawbacks of both. On a soft or a more yielding material is literally that. It's going to have quite a bit of give to it. It's also going to be more comfortable, easier to get used to, and it will give you some support, obviously, but the durability may not be there or the type or the, the degree of support. So it's comfort, but maybe not as much support. On a hard or unyielding device, something like this that has a plastic material, this is an unyielding device. They put a softer pad over top of it to try to make it more comfortable, but at the same light creates a yielding an uh, unyielding device that is going to work really good at correcting a foot alignment issue and giving you support. But the comfort issue is where some people run into issues trying to get used to using this kind of support or this kind of pressure. Now, you can get these really off the shelf or custom made. I will tell you over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of off the shelf products that have come out from lots of different companies that do a pretty decent job creating some levels of support in different ways from metatarsal arch supports to longitudinal long arch supports um, and work levels of adaptation. Can work very, very well. But if you truly do need support, a custom made device is really the way to go. And there's really what I would call pseudo or true custom. Pseudo means they may put your foot into a mold, send it off to a manufacturer that's gonna bring back something that's, that's much closer to your foot than what you sell by from the store, the supermarket. Why? Because those sold in bulk are really gonna have to help the large variety of people. So there can't be any specific support system built into it to give you what you may need. That has to be custom put in or pseudo custom. Full custom is where someone's going to take that device, take a mold of your foot and really create an absolute uh, image of your foot to create the support that you need. This particular one we call a UCB or a deep heel cup to give nice stabilization as well as appropriate type of arch alignment and foot alignment. So pseudo custom versus full custom really does a very nice job, but it is something that takes, again, it's a lot more expensive, but also takes more time to get the right fit and work with the right person. So at this time, we're looking at really corrective or supportive options in orthotics. And that means you break it down into, in my mind, kind of two categories, yielding and unyielding. By unyielding, I mean more of a rigid orthotic, and yielding is a softer orthotic. Now, there's benefits and drawbacks to both, so let's talk about that briefly. If you're talking about just a soft orthotic, something that has a lot of give to it, the benefits of this is it's comfortable. It's easy to put on and start to get benefit from pretty rapidly. The negative is the durability isn't going to be there. It won't hold up as long, and the level or degree of correction isn't necessarily going to be there. That's the, the amount of support that it's going to give you and how long it's going to hold up but there are plenty of different options. Now, if we go to the unyielding, that is something that is made of plastic, rigid material. This is gonna do a very good job creating a support or a correction 
and it's going to ultimately be covered usually with some sort of soft padding to try to make it more comfortable and make it the most usable. So the benefits is really good correction. The negatives is can be hard to get used to. Unfortunately, there's a number of these that end up in closets because folks just can't wear them. They're too unyielding or too uncomfortable. So great idea doesn't always work fully. But that takes us on to the idea of really custom versus um, off the shelf. Now, a few years back, I would tell you off the shelf devices, really, really not much stuff out there. But there are lots of different devices now that do a pretty nice job with arch support and with a metatarsal arch pad, getting the kind of alignment that you need and really not a bad amount of fit uh, for the shoes that they fit into. So decent devices. But the opposite side of that, orthotically, is really this pseudo custom to, to custom. By pseudo custom, what I'm talking about is something that may be your foot is put into a foam box, they call it, and take a basic mold sent off to a manufacturer and comes back fitting your foot pretty well. Better than something custom. What do I mean by better? Well, there's a number of different factors about this that can be different. For example, exactly where your arch fits. If you're buying something off the shelf, it has to be generalized to a size, small, medium, large, size 9, size 10. Where something is made for you, more pseudo or full custom, that is, can be aligned and fit directly to your foot. You're going to get the most intimate fit of the device to you. Now, true full custom is the idea of something that has molded, cast molded your foot, made there, and really molded and, and fit directly to you. That is going to give you the most intimate fit. Here we have kind of a UCB, a deep heel cup to give you support, really sufficient uh, arch support to hold that foot up and keep everything in the best possible alignment, fitting your foot to the most ideal specs. Next, I want to review mechanics or basic mechanics. There is a lot of detail that goes into a foot orthotic. And the basic principle when the foot hits the ground, the amount of energy, what we call ground reaction force, that comes up through the foot. If that foot has good alignment, it can absorb a lot of energy. If it doesn't, then again, that energy gets dissipated incorrectly up the foot, foot slapped, create more energy at the foot, or it can be pressure into the knee, into the hip and the back. So getting alignment means that in shoe orthotics really can help and can be beneficial. The two basic things I just want you to think about with going into all the details of foot mechanics is there's two arches in the foot and we often don't think about that. There's the long arch, the foot from the front to the back, that arch that we think of where someone might say I'm pronated or I'm flat footed or I'm supinated and I'm rolled to the outside. But there's also, if you look at my hand, an arch across my hand this direction, and that in the same in the foot called the metatarsal arch. That arch also is very important, and that's the arch that keeps those bones not in straight alignment, but in a position where they can absorb energy or force. So the long arch and the metatarsal arch should always be considered when you're looking at the orthotic options. And then you have to determine two different kinds of schools of thought. Do I want to wedge the foot to try to move it in one direction, pronation to supination, in to out? Or do I want to try to bring or build the ground up to the foot to give the foot stabilization or support? Now, either mechanism can work, but bringing the ground up to the foot creates a proprioceptive sense and comfort that you can, can put weight there without causing pain, where wedging is going to force the foot to move into a certain direction. That can cause increased pressures. So in general, I'll wedge patients sometimes, but if at all possible, I'd like to bring the ground more up to the foot and create a foot or a stable foot platform with how the orthotic is fit. And you do that with what we call posting. You can post that orthotic around that arch to create a pressure or bringing the ground to the foot. Either way can be effective. Want to make sure you have the right type of posting or the right type of arch supports for you. And thinking about the exact opposite are folks who are supinators. That means they roll to the outside of their feet heavily. Keep in mind that the majority of prosthetic devices, or excuse me, the majority of orthotic devices are fit for pronations, people that roll in. So almost everything you purchase off the shelf is going to be set up that way. If you have a supination problem, it is much more likely you're going to need a pseudo custom or custom fit to get the right orthotic for you. So let's talk about switching gears from 
corrective or supportive to stabilization or energy return. That means I don't have a foot necessarily that needs an arch support, but, or I may need that. On top of that, I need some retur energy return. Could be I have like a toe, a great toe amputation, or an arthritic first metatarsal joint or first toe joint, so I can't take a lot of pressure through that. Or as I come through, I have a weakened foot for a variety of different reasons in which I'm not getting good energy return. This is where our carbon fiber products come in. And there's lots of different carbon fiber products out there. Very thin, the beauty of carbon fiber, way lighter than steel, actually stronger, but it also has return, energy return. So as you walk over something like this, the carbon is gonna take some of the load that the foot would normally take and give you energy back when you take your step. Carbon fiber can be very lightweight, can also be quite rigid, so a lot more support based on the weight of the person, the activity level, and the need. But carbon fiber inserts are, are available in lots of different durometers. And the S1 is what we call like a Morton's uh, uh, orthotic, which is gonna come down and fit just underneath the big toe. Now, this is really a common problem with first MTP or first metatarsal, the base of your big toe, arthritic condition, where you come through that or you've had a turf toe, something where you've jammed or damaged that toe. You come through and you absorb the energy in the carbon fiber, takes the energy off of that first toe. Can be super helpful. And you can also have orthotics like that built into a, an orthotic over the top that has a soft top but has a orth carbon orthotic built inside. If not, you'll never want to put a plate like this in your shoe and just stand on it. It is pretty rigid and uncomfortable. You want to put some sort of insert or something on top of that inside the shoe to protect your foot, while at the same time getting the great energy return uh, from the carbon device. Now, carbon inserts, we're always looking at this idea of how much energy do I want to get back and, and how much can I tolerate? And that's something you're going to have to work with a pet orthodist on. Even though most of these can be bought off the shelf, on a pet orthodist to get the right durometer and the right fit for you. With that being said, a couple of suggestions I would have. One, use a progressive wearing schedule. When you go into any orthotic we have here, but in particular carbon devices, remember that your foot is not used to what it's being asked to do. It might be correct, it might be in the perfect position, but you're gonna have to build up a tolerance to that. So assume that you're gonna start with an hour or so at a time, and then build up an hour every couple of days until you can get up to wearing the device full time. If not, it's very often people wear a shoe, feel or an orthotic, they feel like they got a bruised foot now from this orthotic, oh, these things are bad, I don't wanna use them. That was just inappropriate utilization. You have to remember you're changing something about what the foot has been doing. Even if it's right, it will take some getting used to. And then the idea of consider gait training. Because you're likely walking incorrectly because of the pain or the alignment of your foot. And just because you put an orthotic in and you feel better doesn't mean you fixed your mechanics of your gait that may have caused the problem. So that pain may come back or show up somewhere else up the kinetic chain or up the body. So consider getting with a, a special gait therapist so that they can work with you on improving and recovering the best gait pattern for you. Thank you for watching and we hope you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on orthotic rehabilitation, ranging from selecting the appropriate orthosis to comprehensive gait training exactly. with an orthotic. Good energy. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. You can find them on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash mission gate. Stay up to date on our latest content Click the link in the corner to subscribe and be sure to like and share this video. Also, let us know what you think in the comments section below.